All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 712 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. And once again, I want to apologize for yesterday. I got off really late from work. And uh, it, it, it's like that sometimes. My regular job will pull me in a different direction. But I am here for you guys. And if you are um, following or subscribed to the YouTube channel, you did get some content. I talked about Stephen A. Smith. So if you want to check that out, um, it's over there on the YouTube, uh, you know, Avenue. I think it's on rumble as well. You know, um, I don't really dibble and dabble outside the sports stuff, but I, I do talk about skip and, and Shannon and Stephen A from time to time. So I, I just wanted to make some, uh, some comments about the recent things with Stephen A, but nevertheless, we're going to talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons today. Um, we're going to talk about a possible QB transfer to come back into georgia southern as far as another uh senior or grad transfer uh is, is that going to be the case and also we're going to talk about the falcons really quick um as far as them looking good against the saints and could they continue that against the jets so it's going to be a two for today because i missed yesterday so i'm trying to you know chunk out some uh good content for you guys hopefully you guys will enjoy so if this is your first time here welcome I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. Shout out to the people who's been listening to the show on the podcast avenues. You guys are absolutely amazing. According to Spotify, we are growing. We have grown by 44% year over year. So that is absolutely amazing. Like I said, a lot of listeners over there on the podcast side. But one thing, I don't have a conglomerate of all the analytics on all the avenues. So Apple is showing um, growth as well over the year. I think it's another 50, I think it said 52% growth on the Apple podcast uh, Avenue. Google, I think the analytics are kind of falling off a little bit because that's about to turn the YouTube podcast in 2024. And Anchor and Spotify are basically the same thing, uh, but it's just that uh, it's just under different names. So it's not too much of a difference. In 2024, before I get into the show, I do plan on trying to get on iHeartRadio, trying to get on Amazon Podcasts. I want to get on more avenues because there's some people been asking about iHeartRadio basically since day one. And you got to meet a certain criteria. But the way that we're growing, hopefully by sometime 2024, we will get to that point and it'll be all thanks to you guys. So I also can be found on Twitter at uh, VF Baller. Also, the website is firstandframerates.com. And down in the description, you can find the PayPal or Cash App link if you want to support the show. All right, let's just go ahead and get into this really quick. Are we going to see another uh, QB transfer for Georgia Southern? Is that the case? Uh, I, I see that a lot of fans are starting to open up to it more. I see a lot of talk and rumblings about it, especially with Will Rogers coming out of the SEC. Max Johnson left Texas A&M out of the SEC. I think he went to North Carolina. You got a lot of guys that are out there. More than likely, they're going to move to other Power 5 conferences. But what if we can get a Power 5 guy come to Georgia Southern? What if we can get a, you know, a, a G5 guy that's actually pretty good, that can actually read and follow the air raid offense? What does that mean for J.C. French and, and the company? Now, me personally, I don't want to have this happen again. That That's just me personally. I want to see J.C. French or uh i want to see bren no i'm sorry bren oh goodness bren is gone i'm sorry he's gone i want to see jc french i want to see bo allen i want to see colton fitzgerald actually step up and, and and try to win a job i think you have a lot of time right now to try to get these guys in to see if they can win the job between now and the 2024 season so with that being said that's my thinking that's my process but the fact that this is year three and we went six and six, I think Coach Clay Helton is going to try to swing for the fences and bring in another QB transfer just to try to, to try to save face, save his job, or, you know, just try to make a big deal about next year and possibly win nine, 10 or 11 games. And I think that, I think that's his logical way of thinking, especially when you saw Cal Vantries and Davis Brent come to Georgia Southern. Now, is it a bad idea the results can say that it is because a lot of people are sitting here like, like, no, please, no, don't want this again. And, but there's the other side of people that are starting to, you know, look in and look into it and be like, look, if the, if they can get the guy from UGA to come here and Will Rogers can come, if we can get a, P, a power five guy 
that that knows that that could play the uh the sport and I mean I'm not the sport plays a position of quarterback more people be open to it. Um, I get it, and I'm not a, I'm not against it totally. I just want to see the young guys get a chance because if we're constantly going back and dibbling dabbling in the transfer portal for a quarterback, I really start to question what Brian Ellis and Coach Clay Helton are doing with the development of quarterbacks. Now, I will say overall, every other position that we've seen, you've seen development. Even the fact that we lost our offensive line coach, you saw some guys on the offensive line get a little bit better. I guess the scheme is a little bit different because we have a new coach, but those guys aren't like, extremely terrible it's just a difference of a, a philosophy at the offensive line you saw the defense get better with more with the talent that we had some transfers came in and made a difference the tj smith some guys who got extremely better like mark stampley um also to, um, tyrell davis and another transfer demel hickman played very well this season so there's there's a lot to go around when you're looking at transfers coming in but for some reason georgia southern has not hit the right button on the quarterback situation. Even with Cal Van Trees, I think he's done a very good job, but it wasn't the it it wasn't the result that we wanted. I think it was a lot of interceptions that were thrown. I think he did some heroic things throughout the season and made Georgia Southern fans believe that we could throw the ball. But there is some there is some critique on what Cal Van Trees did. And I'm not about to get into what Davis Brin did. I'm just gonna leave that alone. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I said this at the end of uh, episode 711, don't be surprised if another QB transfer comes in. Am I a fan of it? No. But I got a gut feeling that's what's going to happen, and uh, we just got to be prepared for it. Now, I will be on record to say this right now. If you bring in another uh, transfer, Coach Clay Helton, and it doesn't pan out, and, and you know, stat-wise, I don't really care of, about the stats. But if this quarterback is going to be the main reason why we're stuck in certain situations throughout the season and we end up going, you know, six and six yet again, and it's going to be some questions about the job. And and I don't like to talk about that in, in, in you know, especially when it comes to coaches that I do like. I like Coach Clay Helton. I like the the energy that he's brought, brought to Georgia Southern. But, you know, at this point, six and six really can't cut it. It can't. It can't. I understand I believe it's a four to six year process, but you got a lot of fans that are not happy with six and six. And it's not just six and six. It's the way that six and six are, is happening. The losses to Marshall, the losses to Old Dominion, those are unacceptable. And in some cases, you could say the loss to uh, Texas State is, un uh, is unacceptable as well because we should have been more prepared and more competitive in that game because Texas State – didn't look that good at you know in some cases before and after that game. JMU, I give you JMU. It is what it is. But I got a feeling that that's going to happen. He's going to bring a quarterback in, and six and six not going to cut it. Especially if the quarterback is going to be the reason why we're six and six. That quarterback needs to come in and make some changes as far as the play that we see on the field. And that quarterback needs to be the reason. He needs to be the leader while we're eight and four and better. You know, I mean that's just how the fans are talking right now. So that's what I'm going to leave it with Georgia Southern. Let's jump on the Falcons before we get out of here. The Atlanta Falcons played fairly well. I think they look really good against the New Orleans Saints. I know we're going to talk about the interception that, uh, um, I don't even like speaking his name too much, Desmond Ritter made the one, not the first one, but the second one on the sideline, that was abysmal. Now, the first one, I'm not going to blame him. Somebody didn't get run their routes right, and I don't know if, uh, you know, B. John Robinson just held up and didn't finish his route because that he was probably going to get hit. But you know, you, you got that's what you're out there for. You gotta, you gotta um go for the ball. If you don't, stuff like this will happen. That second interception was unacceptable. But I do like the fact that Desmond Ritter was able to bounce back and uh, you know, make plays to win the football game. He he led a 95 yard drive, guys. You know, and for me to say that this kid is probably going to be above average as the ceiling, you know, it didn't look elite, but you got elite results and you can't really, you know, you, you can't really uh, knock that. It is what it is. The defense looked very well, held the team to five uh, field goals and uh, two turnovers. The field goals is a little bit too high. You'd never want a team to get five, but three, you hold a team to three, more likely you're going to win the game. So it, 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 in the scheme of things, it's not that bad. 
um, I would like to hold the team to maybe about three field goals, you know, if we're going to do it. But I can't complain overall. They look good. Will they look like this against the Jets? Uh, we'll talk about that in the coming days when we talk about the pregame because the Jets, their quarterback is in. Eh, I don't know what Tim Boyles look like. Um, the offense is, they got some weapons, they got some pieces, and the defense is is fast. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the Falcons do up there in the Meadowlands when we play against the Jets. I think that we can win this game. It'd be nice to have a two-game winning streak and be 6-6 six and six and really be in control of the division, but they have to go out there and perform because we know we don't know what Falcons are going to show up. Is it going to be the Falcons that start off the season pretty solid, or is it going to be the ones that was a part of the three-game losing streak? We just don't know, but that that's going to have to change. We don't need to see any more three-game losing streak, Falcons. I want to see the Falcons that that beat the Texans. I want to see the Falcons that beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers without the crazy turnovers because that, that Buccaneers game, oh, my God, Desmond Ritter, please don't turn the ball over like that. We need to cut down on the turnovers. And honestly, we cut down the turnovers and we run the ball like we did. We could beat anybody. You know, I'm not a big fan of uh, Coach uh, Arthur Smith's uh, philosophy. I'm kind of checked out on him, to be honest with you. But if he's winning games, as long as you're wearing that black and red, you know, I'm, I'm going to be behind you 100%. We just have to agree to disagree on how I think you're running the, the running the games and running the teams. It is what it is. It happens. I mean, just because you're a fan of the team, you don't have to like everything. And I, I just don't like the philosophy, but, hey, it, it, it worked well enough to be ahead of the division, right? <laughs> right. But I'm going to get out of here, y'all. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I try to keep these shows between 10 in 15, 10, and, or 11, and 17 minutes, anywhere around that area. I don't want to keep you guys too much. So if you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know what you guys think about these two topics, another transfer for Georgia Southern, and the Falcons actually look good on Sunday. What do you think about the Falcons going forward? Mm, excuse me. I could be found on YouTube and Rumble. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> I could be... I, 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 I could be found on YouTube and Rumble. Also on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. Um, I can also um, be found on Twitter at VFBaller. Cash app and PayPal links are down below. Thank you guys for the support. 2023 looked like it's been an excellent, excellent season, uh, uh, year for the show. Like I said, we're up 44% on Spotify. We're up like another 50% on Apple. I don't know what Google is right now. Um, I have to look and see, but on average, we're up around 50% from last year. I mean, you, you just can't beat that. And it's all thanks to you guys. All right, y'all. I'm going to go hang out with the family. I'm going to get out of here. All right, y'all. Y'all be careful. Y'all take it easy out there. And uh, y'all be blessed. All right, y'all. Peace.